At first, let was... me sum up. The war is a crime. The war is just. No, it's what it's I want to do is try to change the terms of but this of this discussion. Uh, when I let you, you can, because in these things, this the twain will never meet here. But if we start to talk, ask if the war is sensible, practical, logical, sustainable, winnable, we actually might move this discussion um, a bit forward. Mr. Benjamin, hypothetically, what's a good war? Tell me a positive outcome of this, something that you would think certain events, events which would transpire in which you would say, damn, not bad. I'd rather answer what he said. Really? You know no, I mean? no. Because first you, of all, let me just say this. Man. You got it. You got to ask. Let me just. Yeah, I would rather respond. No, no. To I, that. I will. I will right, again. Look, I don't, look, look. Again, just, listen. Say, the, last listen. Good, the last good war I saw that this country was involved in was World War II. All right. That's the last good war. So, and why? I mean, it doesn't take a genius to figure out why. I mean, we were confronted with a fascist maniac who really could conquer the world. I mean, Saddam Hussein. See. I don't really give a, you know, I mean, look, so to, to talk about that Saddam Hussein was a, was a danger to us, it's nonsense, you know? I mean, it's nonsense from every point of view, and if you give me a chance to talk, I'll show you it's nonsense, right? Uh, but, Mr. But, Adolf Hitler, but Adolf Hitler really did have the means to conquer the world. Mr. So Benjamin, again, again, adjust, functioning you know, in, a, in a, I'm, I'm, I'm not asking what you believe, I'm, I'm just asking you to think in this in, in hypothetical terms, what if? democracy were to come to Iraq. Now, this may be unlikely, to me it's unlikely, but what if democracy and a new level of prosperity right. were to come? All right, Mr. Mr. Wolf, let me just say this. I'm surprised that my opponent, who, who, who makes a big deal out of being an atheist, right, which is something we share, even though I don't know if you're a real atheist, you see, because the only way you can tell if you're a real atheist is if you, like, for instance, the, the, the high seas test. If you're on a ship that you think is going to sink and you still don't swim, I was on a ship. I was on a ship, the SS Colorado, uh, Texaco, Colorado, that we thought was going to sink in the right off uh, Galveston, Texas, and everybody was praying with me. So I'm a real atheist, but I don't wear. But I, but I don't. But I, but I, but I, but I, but I recognize the marvelous things the church do. But the thing that fascinates me is, is that as a proclaimed atheist, you're willing to engage in faith-based analysis. That's what he's engaged in. There's no evidence to make me believe that there's going to be any democracy in Iraq. What I see in Iraq, first of all, let me say this: if there I, hold were, on, hold on, hold on. if, if, well, if, 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 a, if a frog had wings, his ass wouldn't hit the ground when he hopped. I don't believe that there's going to be any democracy in Iraq. I think it's nonsense. Okay, well, let's see. If you, wound, if you, you, know I mean? if you wound or can't create that hypothetical, let's try it from the other side. Well, I'm a, uh, let me just say this, man. You know, you're really too busy to be the, the, the you know, the same what a moderator is supposed to do. You're too busy. You're Christopher, the, the worst possible situation, a set of events that would make you say, oh, my God, this was a mistake. Um, well... I shan't judge the grammar of your question, but if you understood what I said to begin with, I, I said that the case for uh, change de regime, not a faith-based point at all, in Iraq was complete on its own terms by 1998, and there was no alternative to it. Or rather, there were alternatives. I'll just quickly say what they would be. Um, the implosion of Iraqi society, which, which was run by divide and rule uh, between Shia and Sunni confessional Muslims, uh, and genocide in respect of the, the large Kurdish minority, the implosion of Iraqi society, the coming, the collapse into a Ceausescu mania that was already very obvious of the Saddam Hussein regime it's, itself and hit his own personality. The charming uh, competition that would have been between his two delightful sons who die in Kusai. <laughs> and the certainty that this uh, implosion in Iraq, not unlike what happened in Afghanistan, would have led to an invasion, but not by the United States and Great Britain, but by Turkey, by Saudi Arabia and by Iran, each of them intervening on the most on the side of the most extreme of their co-religionists or uh, political supporters. It would have been, in other words, something like what the Congo now is for West Africa. Uh, what, for the, what, for the I'm, what I'm region. trying to do is, and is would get... Still, and we'd still have had to do something about it under enormously more difficult conditions and with gigantically greater loss of Did life Did you say we could stop each other? No, uh, what you I'm... said that in the beginning, right? So, well, wait, no. Yeah. That's, I'm sorry for a long I'm throat... I'm just curious to know. I'm sorry know. for a long throat clearing, but... 
Yes, I can imagine. I, I wake up every morning thinking, what if we've gone in too late? What if this all goes wrong? What if Zakawi's people uh, can't be beaten? Uh, what if uh, Shia sectarianism takes over the Shia vote? What if, what if it's all too late and it goes south? Well, you should worry about this as much as I do. Okay, You're not, that's not, you wouldn't be spectators to that, ladies and gentlemen. Under that, cir sister, under that circumstance, just let you me You have to hope that doesn't happen. If that, if that is the case, Let's put, it, let's put it in terms, of, in terms of American resources. If it goes to, as it did in Vietnam, which we will return to, 50,000 lives, at what point do you say, this was a mistake, we just can't afford it, and, um, um, and woe that we could um, undo it? Well, I was at the opening of the Vietnam Memorial in, in Washington when it was still a ditch of mud and just those wonderful stones from my in Ling, and I shall never forget the, the day I went, and walking along the wall and tracing all the names, which, as you know, are, are chronological, not alphabetical. And the first one, or two or three, as you perhaps don't know unless you've visited, is from 1954, when no one even knew the United States was in Vietnam, except Colonel Lansdale and his CIA backers. Uh, and to re realizing then, that's, being, that's what being lied into war is, being, is like. Um, I think the, the, every single casualty in that war Every, I'm so sorry. Um, it, it's hell to talk and realize that no one's been listening. Um, <laughs> or understanding a single bloody word once said. But um, in my opinion, I'll, I'll condense then. Uh, every single uh, life lost in that war uh, is the result of, I agree with Dr. Benjamin about this, a criminal and illegal attempt to prolong the life of French colonialism in Indochina. Um, if anyone can fail to see the difference between that and uh, trying to uh, rescue Iraq from implosion and help it to establish a federal democracy, as well as to disarm it, uh, then I'm sorry, um, I think that all distinctions must have been thrown overboard. Well said. Uh, Mr. Benjamin, would Shrewdly you like to put. respond? 